So, for those of you who aren't aware, which was me up until very shortly, the Reddit, um, Reddit had an AMA by the Overkill producer Almir Listo. And it is a veritable Category 5 shitstorm. I mean, oh, holy crap. This is a train wreck of monumental and historically significant proportions. But what am I talking about? Who is Almir Listo? Who is Overkill? Why do people care? Blah, 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 blah. Let me fill you in on what the dealio is. Our story starts two years ago. Hell, closer to three. The Payday 2 lead designer, David Goldfarb, in January of 2013, said the game wouldn't have any microtransactions in it. In fact, he was about as specific as you could possibly be. When Mr. Goldfarb was asked if they would anticipate putting them in the game in the future, he said, quote, No, no. God, I hope not. Never. No. Which seems kind of cut and dry to me. Not a lot of room for wiggle here. Not a lot of room to spin this in different ways. Now, to be fair to Mr. G, he has since left Overkill to pursue other interests. And uh, right now, he's probably glad he made that decision. Now, let's go ahead and fast forward to the year of our law, 2015. On October the 16th, a update was released for Payday 2, the Black Market Update, which is designed to, quote-unquote, opens up a brand new way of allowing you to personalize your weapons with skins, mods, and more. And how do you do that? It's easy. All you gotta do is uh, unlock a safe, which can only be done with a drill that you have to buy with real money. Two and a half bucks for a drill. Once you open the safe, you're given a random weapon skin, and it gives a new ability and extra power to a gun. Which is really just a long way of saying that Payday 2 became pay to win. You could effectively buy power. You could purchase drills to give upgrades to your guns that you could not get through any other methodology. Now, this is in direct contrast to what was said in January of 2013. Again, Goldfarb was really, really specific here. There would not be microtransactions in this game. Other quotes were said, of course, but that's kind of the most black and white one that you can find. In fact, in another interview... Overkill said um, that they were kind of insulted, you even asked. Now, of course, the, um, the community and fan reaction to this has been uh, less than ideal. In fact, it's been an outright shitstorm. And rightly so, it should be. This is ten different kinds of fucked up. There was a massive outcry of displeasure, discontent, anger, and disappointment from the community. The internet was filled with comments of people saying they weren't going to play the game anymore. They, they were done. They, want, they did not want to be part of this. They didn't want to keep playing the game. Veterans, new players, casuals, all alike, they took to the internet. They flocked in droves to voice their discontent and their disappointment. In fact, if you head to the Steam page right now, you might, of course, notice the impact that this community-driven poop storm has had on this game. User reviews are mostly positive, but 78% of the 160 and a half thousand reviews for this game are positive. Which doesn't sound bad, but then you have to consider that this game was sitting at a 94, 95% the day before the black market update. Yeesh. For a game that is of this scale, that big of a drop, is extremely significant. You have to have a lot of people putting negative reviews or changing their reviews from positive to negative. That's a large scale movement here. 160,000 reviews? Let me throw some numbers at you. Depending where you get your info, basically it's a 17% drop in the user score. That's, that's substantive on its own right. But 17% of 160,000? That is 27,200, just to show you how many people that is. And if my math is off, then, well, sorry, but not sorry. Math is for nerds. 
Oh, and by the way, that's not even getting into the written out reviews that you get from these players. Let me show you a couple of these reviews just to let the point sink in a little bit. Just in case you haven't already gotten the idea of how much of a crappy idea this was for Overkill to implement. This is the top review for Payday 2. It is the first review on the list that you see when you go to the Steam store page. It's written by Bandana D. Yeehaw! Not recommended. 1,152 hours on record. Posted October the 15th. He praises the game, says it's great, it's a very interesting, fun, and engaging experience, but he starts off with in the second paragraph, so what happened? To get this negative review, long story short, the updates. People began to note that with each passing DLC, there was a sort of power creep going on. A pay-to-win system. Uh-oh. But Mr. D is not the only person who thinks this, not by long shot. The next review, right beneath his. Armin, not recommended. 1,295 hours. Posted October the, well, 15th. Oh, and the review right beneath his, Germ, not recommended, 1,117 hours on record, posted October the 15th. Celebrating the four-year birthday of Payday with microtransactions. Good idea, Overkill. Let's keep rolling, man. AU Roadrunner, not recommended, 1,979 hours on record, not recommended, posted October the 15th. See the pattern? Fuck it, let's give you one more just for the road. Galaxy End. Wait, no, fuck. That's Galaxy End. Da it's, his, his capital letters threw me off there. D shut up. Not recommended. 110 hours on record. Posted, oh, what do you know? October the 15th. These are the top six reviews on the Steam Store page. I'm serious. Go to the page right now. This is, this is exactly what you'll see. Not recommended, not recommended, not recommended, not recommended, not recommended, not recommended. Once you go to the reviews, not recommended. That seems to be the general consensus nowadays. Now, even though 78% of those reviews are still positive, we have definitely not seen the end of this decline, especially because on Reddit today, there was the Ask Me Anything by the producer of Overkill. Oh, but don't you worry, we'll get into that later. Hold on to your buttholes, ladies and gentlemen. We're still going through the annals of history. Or maybe in this case, the annals of history. Ha-ha! Butt jokes are funny. Our story does not end there, right? The public outcry was massive against these added microtransactions. People felt betrayed, downright lied to, because they, you know, they, they were. I mean, let's let all those reviews that I showed you, the top reviews on the page, let that sink in. Let that information fester for just a moment. These are people who have played this game for a thousand, a thousand two hundred, a thousand nine hundred hours. Okay? These are people who are veterans of the game. These are people that have more time spent with this game than I've spent at work. Not really. I'm just going for hyperbole. But the last review I showed you, the guy had 110 hours, which is, I mean, yeah, it's a lot, but it's not by any means uh, unbelievable. It is not at all unreasonable to see somebody have 100 or so hours in a game that they enjoy. Which just goes to show you, even the quote-unquote non-vets, the casuals, the people who just kind of like this game, even they are turning their backs on it. Even they will say, it's not recommended. Even they say, I'm uninstalled, uh, and I'm not part of this game anymore. I've left. It's over. Done. Too late. It's over. Toodles. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. See ya. Das Vidania. I mean, how depressing. Let's think about how depressing. What's that be for these guys? I mean, yeah, we read the reviews, we think, wow, they must be disappointed. Fuck no, they're not disappointed. They're heartbroken. They have been stabbed in the back with Shakespearean proportions. This is the kind of backstabbing that makes Iago look like a chump. That was, that was, a, that was a Shakespeare reference. Read a book, people. Dude tricked a black man. But the devs of a game like this, I mean, what, what do you have to do? To make people who play a game this much just outright throw up their hands and say, we're done. All at once. I mean, yeah, some of them alluded to the power creep that started to happen. The DLC that started to slowly but surely usher in this real... But you have people who have all this time. 
this a thousand plus hour plays of this game and they're they're done. They're finished. They walk away. All that effort, all that time, they enjoyed it while it was there, but they're done. They're gone. It's over. The dream is dead. Fuck, you play a game for that long and it's like your friend. You come home from work, who do you confide in? Your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your significant other, your pet dog? Fuck no. You snuggle up with Payday 2 and you weep into its ear all your worldly troubles. Not anymore, bitch. Giving a damn is $2.50. Credit cards are accepted. Apply at the window. Apply now for membership rates. Asshole. I mean, my most played game by far is Battlefield 4. I've got... Fuck, let me check. Lance Armstrong's last remaining testicle that's excessive. No wonder I'm paler than a ghost. To a boy. But the point of all this is that if DICE, say, were to release a... Well, let's be frank here. If EA told DICE to release a super mega platinum battle pack, and in those battle pack there were special, special weapons that always did more damage, that were more accurate, that reloaded faster, that had more manageable recoil, that could damage vehicles, that would get extra headshot bonuses... That would fucking drive you to work and give you a blowjob. And they would say nice things about you behind your back to the people that they met. And those platinum battle packs were $2, $3, $4. Then I would leave. The exact same thing would I do that those Payday 2 veterans did. I would throw my hands in the air. And instead of saying, Ayo, gotta let go, I would just walk away. Ugh, it's sad to think about, really. But let's get right back to the meat and potatoes of this matter. So, we have the outcry, we have the backlash, and let's be frank, Overkill is very aware that this would happen. They knew it would happen, but they came out and said, oh, well, that's not good, let's change a few things. So, into the game, they added the percentage chance that you could get one of these drills from playing the game normally. But let's be frank here. Even though they added in the ability to get these special $2.50 drills from playing the game normally, do you honestly think that the drop rates on these will be anything even remotely common? I'ma say no. But let's get back to today, which will probably be tomorrow when I upload the video. So let's, in retrospect, get back to yesterday. Today slash yesterday, October the 25th, as I said before, there was a Reddit Ask Me Anything held by Overkill producer Almir Listo. And Mr. Listo, oh fuck, he got the snot beat out of him. And his opening post, here's what Mr. Listo had to say. <clears throat> Hello everyone, Almir here, producer at Overkill. I'm here to discuss on the crew's behalf in regards to the latest events in Payday 2, the road ahead, and any other questions you might have. First of all, thanks to AMV for coordinating with us and having this AMA. Thanks to the Payday community for being vocal, loyal, straight to the point. We might not always agree, but we at Overkill respect your opinions <laughs> Sorry, and do what we can to meet you halfway when we disagree. Before we start, I'd just like to say that the reason we haven't wanted to say anything before Crimefest ended is that the answer to many questions are based on Crimefest as a whole, not on an individual event. As I answer your questions, this will become more clear. Please also note that during Crimefest, we decided not to do any interviews with any press or media before talking to you. We feel it's important to make this point to you before we start, as you are all that matter. No doubt there are plenty of questions, so let's get started, shall we? And holy shit, did people get started. This entire Reddit Ask Me Anything is a classic and perfect example of how to dodge answering questions and do nothing but fill up your answer with PR bullshit. We respect the fans this, we've come so far this, we didn't know this, blah blah blah. Nothing but PR pandering. The top comment was by Charlie905 who asked many serious questions. He asked questions like why the pd2stats.com just went down and how there's no communication between creators and overkill and the community. He was asking about the, his opinion on the loss of veterans who dive into code. They're asking about where all the modders that have quit the community have gone, uh, what you'll do to try to get them back. He asked, most importantly perhaps, quote, 
what do you have to say about promising no microtransactions in the past and then going back on that statement and introducing the black market update? But so begins Almir's PR deflection and other pandering and non-answers that he spews. He's a classic example of talking without saying anything. He even says later down in the page, quote, Not in our wildest dreams could we anticipate the type of reaction that the update received during the first few days. Which is, of course, total horseshit. They knew exactly what they were getting into. Right now, they're just practicing Activision levels of damage control. And every moment that goes by, every second that the clock ticks, more and more and more people on the internet voice their displeasure, more people claim to uninstall it, more people claim that they're done with it. And so that is where we stand at the moment. Yet another game that introduces microtransactions, even though the game is making a profit, that we knew. Halo 5, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, the list goes on and on. Full $60 releases with more pay-to-win or pay-to-skip features. And these are only in games because people show they'll buy it. People will show that they will actually spend money on this garbage despite the negative impact it has on companies and despite the negative impact it has on games. Overkill lied about their microtransactions. The developers of Warhammer End Times Vermintide Fat Shark Games promised there will not be microtransactions. I mean, that's good and all, it really is. But all it makes us do is go, eh, we've heard that song and dance before. The entire gaming community is absolutely looking their gift horse in the mouth. We should be rejoicing that a company is saying, we're not going to have microtransactions, but ah, we still have the bad taste on our lips of this lie from Overkill. Everybody in that page I showed you there from PC Gamer, they were going, yeah, sure, totally. We totally believe you. This hasn't come back and bit us in the ass. And again, the reason this exists is because there are whales out there who will buy and buy and buy because there are these noble credit card warriors who will gladly flush and fly and throw their money towards a company and they don't care about what it does to the industry or to the game or to the balance. They just want the best stuff, they want the shiny toys, and they will pay money to get it. The defense cannot be made, oh, how dare someone be angry at me for how I spend my money? Why would anyone be upset? I'm not making them buy it. It's totally optional. It's totally optional. You don't have to spend the money. And what people who say this don't realize is that every cent of money that someone throws to a company for a microtransaction hurts every single person who doesn't pay for it. People who pay for something like this, they are negatively impacting the industry, they are negatively impacting the attitude that developers have towards what they can and cannot sell, what they can and cannot get away with. Companies know how much money they make on microtransactions. They know how much money that bullshit gets them. So if you buy a game and don't buy the microtransactions, they will know that. They will see that. If they see that only 1% of people bought microtransactions, they may say, well, gosh, we're losing sales because people are pissed off at these microtransactions and no one's buying the microtransactions. So in order to get people to buy the game, we got to put that content in the game so people get more bang for their buck. And what do you know? All it takes is a bit of discipline from people, but gamers are not known for their discipline. And that's why Destiny is selling like hotcakes. That game is a classic example of, of a misrepresented product, lies, stripped out content, minimum viable product. But people eat it up. Channels like Funhouse and all those guys, they'll sing the praises of Destiny to the moon regardless of the shady and horrible business practice of Bungie Vision. Oh, but it's such a fun game. Can't you just sit and play this game and have fun with it? Oh, but that's getting into something I should save for later. The point of this entire video is to highlight the debacle of Overkill as a studio and what they have done to Payday 2 and the impact that it could possibly have on gamers, even of other games. Certainly of the ones who played Payday 2, even the veterans of a thousand plus hours who have bowed out. Probably for good. Do not forget that this happened. When Payday 3 comes around, do not forget what they did here. When Payday 4 comes around, 
Don't forget what they did. When Overkill releases their next game, don't forget that this happened. It is imperative that you vote, not with your angry comments online, though those definitely help. Flame away, keyboard warriors. But vote with your wallet. Don't buy it. That's why I didn't buy Syndicate, because of Unity. You have to vote with your wallet. If we as a community show that we won't put up with this, that we won't accept the lies, if we don't buy into this studio's games because of what they pulled here, that will be a ripple in the pond that other companies will not miss. Just like how nobody wants to be the next Arkham Knight, nobody wants to have their next game boycotted or simply ignored because of the things that they did before it. In the words of Friedrich Nietzsche, I'm not upset that you lied to me. I'm upset that from now on, I can't believe you.